This video reviews the process for polynomial long divisions in a polynomial ring with coefficients in a field. So polynomial long division starts with two polynomials, a of x and b of x, in a polynomial ring f brackets x. So remember that this means that f is a field. That means it's a ring with multiplicative inverses for every element other than zero. So f is some field. And examples here could be z sub p, the ring of real numbers, the field of rational numbers, etc. Uh, lots of examples that we've seen in uh, abstract algebra. And we want to divide a of x by b of x to get a quotient and a remainder. Uh, and the equation that we're looking for is a of x equals b of x times q of x plus r of x, where q of x is the thing that we call the quotient, and r of x is the remainder, which is either the zero polynomial or the degree of r of x is less than the degree of b of x. Now the process for long division in this polynomial ring is very similar to this, the, the regular process for long division. Um, and if you have forgotten that process or need a refresher, I've got a video on that that you can find linked in the description below. Um, but the basic idea is that we look at the leading terms of a of x and b of x, and we divide those leading terms. So what we really want to do is take a x to the n and divide it by b x to the m. But we don't really have division, but we have a form of division in the sense of multiplicative inverses. So we look at the x part of this, x to the m divided by x to the m, we're going to subtract those exponents, so n minus m, and then a divided by b, that's really just going to be a times b inverse. And so that's going to be the first term of our quotient. Then just like in the regular long division process, we multiply a b inverse x to the n minus m by the divisor b of x, and then subtract. And then we repeat that process until we get a remainder that is less has degree less than the degree of our divisor or whether we get the zero polynomial. So let's see this process in action with this problem, uh, which is happening in the polynomial ring Z7 brackets X. So Z7 is a ring, it's a field with seven elements and every element other than zero has a multiplicative inverse. Now, because the leading coefficient of my divisor is two, we're going to need to know what two inverse is in Z7. And hopefully it's not too hard to see that two inverse is four because two times four is one in Z7. Two times four is eight and mod seven, two times four is eight. eight that's the same as one. So that means that when I divide six X cubed divided by two X squared, I take the leading term of my dividend and divide it by the leading term of my divisor, that's going to be 6 times that 2 inverse times x to the first. We take 3 minus 2. Those are regular integers. Remember, our exponents are always regular integers. And then 6 times 2 inverse, that's 6 times 4. And that's going to be 3, because 6 times 4 is 24. And 24 mod 7 is the same as 3. So that's going to be 3x, which means the leading term is 3x. We also could have just realized that 6 divided by 2 in regular arithmetic is just 3. We've seen that when we have these multiplicative inverses, and that would work out with regular integers, then because of our rules of congruence, that works out the same way. But anyway, we're going to multiply now. 3 times 2 is 6. x times x squared is x cubed, so we get 6x cubed. And just like in regular long division, we want these leading terms to match up so that we get some cancellation when we subtract. We can also fill in these missing lower degree terms. And then 3x times 1, that's 3x. So now we're subtracting. And again, we have to remember that all of the arithmetic that we're doing is in Z7. So 3x squared minus 0x squared is just 3x squared. But now 0 minus 3, rather than writing that as negative 3, we're going to write that as plus 4, because in Z7, negative 3 and 4 are the same thing. And then 0 minus 0 is just 0. Now our working remainder has degree 2, our divisor has degree 2, which means we need to keep going. So our next step is to take the leading term of our divisor and divide it into the leading term of our working remainder. So that's going to be 3x squared divided by 2x squared. The x squareds are going to go away, and then 3 divided by 2, that means 3 times 2 inverse. That's 3 times 4, which is 12, which is the same as 5. So the next term of my quotient is 5. 5 times 2x squared, well, 5 times 2 is 3, and so that matches up, and then 5 times 1 is 5, and now we just subtract. 4 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 5 is negative 2, which is the same, sorry, 0 minus 2, 0 minus 5, excuse me, is negative 5, which is the same as positive 2 in Z7, so our remainder is 4x plus 2. 
So in this problem, our quotient is 3x plus 5, and our remainder, r of x, is 4x plus 2. Again, our dividend, the thing that we divided into, that's our b of x. So this right here, that's my b of x. The thing we divided by, the divisor, is a of x. Sorry, I got these backwards. So the thing we divided into is a of x, and the thing we divided by is b of x. And we want to make sure that a of x, our dividend, equals b of x times q of x plus r of x. So in this case, we would want to make sure that 6x cubed plus 3x squared is equal to 2x squared plus 1 times our quotient times 3x plus 5 plus our remainder plus 4x plus 2. And if you work all that out in z7 brackets x, it does in fact work out. All right, let's do one more example. Again, we're working with modular arithmetic polynomials. So this time our coefficients are in z3 of x. And again, our leading coefficient is 2. So one of the things we're going to need to know is what 2 inverse is. And in z3, 2 inverse is 2. And that's because 2 times 2, which is 4, is the same as 1 mod 3. And so when I divide by 2, that's the same as multiplying by 2. So 2x squared goes into x to the fourth 2x squared times. We subtract the exponents and then divide the coefficients. Go off on the side and work that out. This is 1x to the fourth divided by 2x squared. So that's 1 times 2 inverse times x to the 4 minus 2. And like I said, that's 2x squared. So we're going to multiply that out. 2x squared times 2x squared. Well, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. And 2 times 2 is 1. And then we get 2x squared times x is 2x cubed to the third. And then 2x squared. And then we can fill in these missing terms. And then subtract. So we get cancellation. 0 minus 2 is 1. So that's 1x cubed. 2 minus 2 is 0. So we just have zeros all the way for the rest of this. Now our working remainder has degree 3, which means we need to keep going. 2x squared goes into 1x cubed. Well, that's going to be pretty similar to what we just did. x cubed divided by 2x squared. That's 1x cubed. That'll be 1 times 2 inverse times x to the first. That'll be 2x to the first, or just 2x. So the next term of my quotient is 2x, and now we're going to multiply. 2x times 2x squared is 1x cubed. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. And then we have a zero constant term. We'll subtract. Again, we get cancellation just like we want. 0 minus 2 is 1. 0 minus 2 is 1, so we get plus 1x. And then 0 minus 0 is 0. We're going to have one more step because, again, we have a, a working remainder that has degree 2. That's equal to the degree of our divisor. It needs to be less than, so we have one more step. So we're going to have 1x squared, the leading term of my remaining polynomial here, divided by the leading term of my divisor. So 1x squared divided by 2x squared is going to work out to be 2. And then I multiply and subtract. So 2 times 2x squared is 1x squared. 2 times x is 2x. And then 2 times 1 is 2. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, which is the same as 2 in z3. So we get 2x. And the 0 minus 2 is 1. So my quotient here, my final answer, is 2x squared plus 2x plus 2. And then my remainder, we got down there at the bottom, is 2x plus 1. So very similar to the regular long division process, the main difference is that we're working all of the arithmetic that we're doing with the coefficients is happening in whatever field it is that you're working with. In these examples, we've been using modular arithmetic. So good luck with these problems, and uh, refer back to that original long division uh, video if you need refresher on that process.